this notion that we have somehow developed this advanced technology and it's already available is just nonsense. I mean, we just, and you can find things, guy we talked about earlier, it dates back to, he's saying in the 50s and 60s that we've been flying such little widgets around. And I categorically reject that uh, notion. Now, our assumption, of course, was that A, that there was a big black program going on someplace, but we also anticipated that either they, A, wanted to get the information out, we're looking for a conduit to do that, and we could become that, or B, we would get uh, severely beaten and told, sit down, shut up, go suck your thumb in the corner, uh, and neither of which happened, and rather... As uh, I just put it together, as we said, we had people from all of the services, from the intelligence community and from aerospace. Uh, they all had to have the uh, TS and what we call SCI level clearances and all that and got together and compared. And amazingly, everybody else, they were all interested, thought along the same lines, thought we all thought, we thought you were doing that. Well, no, no, isn't that your responsibility? And, and as I've said uh, over the years, it took quite a while, but I was going to higher and higher levels and uh, basically was getting a very consistent response from uh, everybody. I would usually try to get them pregnant, meaning I would ask for something, not a big thing, but to get them actively involved. Uh, nobody ever shut me down and people just got passed on and on. Um, one of the stories uh, that I do tell in the book uh, is that I was meeting with a retired Lieutenant General who had been the head of one of those three letter agencies that would have to be involved. If you listen to you know, how these things happen, we have these response teams waiting out to pounce on UFOs any place in the world and all of that. They would have been integrally involved. The information would have gone through that uh, agency. And he goes, A, we don't do that. There's no requirement. But more importantly, B, I'll tell you about the ones I saw. So here you had an individual who was the head of one of those agencies who had had a personal experience, a sighting of things it happened years prior, but he knew aerodynamically was impossible and far beyond the technological capabilities at that time. And yet that did not translate into institutional interest or responsibility. And I do make a big dis uh, differentiation between individual interest and institutional responsibility or institutional interest. Now, one of the things, like I said, I spent a lot of time in the building. And I'm always interested when the news says the Pentagon says. Well, first of all, the Pentagon says nothing. The Pentagon is a big stone building. And it doesn't talk, but it's inhabited by about 29,000 people that, that work, uh, work in there. <clears throat> now, people say the, you know, the military doesn't say that there are admit UFOs. That's apparently not true. This goes back to 1947 and the Twining Memorandum and them you know, putting out the word that, yeah, UFOs are real. So I know there's a mythology out there that says, you know, the Pentagon denies the existence. That has never been true. Now, what they are and getting into it now, that is a totally uh, different story. So the good news and bad news. And they say here, the government doesn't know what the government knows. There is no the government. That's just not the way the system works. Uh, but the point is here, there are a number of people, we'll get to some of the numbers, that are interested in the area, and most of because they've had personal observations. But in reality, most of them don't care. We'll talk to, to some of those issues. Now, they keep talking about disclosure, and I argue this is not the greatest story never told. That we have had, as you see, a number of presidents, uh, those of you who will recognize, you know, our three, uh, uh, Truman, 
uh, Carter and, uh, as you know, Ronald Reagan actually chased UFOs and they had Gorbachev. Again, uh, various governments across the world, the Vatican, all saying, yay, verily, UFOs are real. Now, what are the countries that have done disclosure on it? All of these uh, countries have, you know, published many, many uh, documents saying, yep, UFOs are real, and here's our experience with it. Now, we were told that terrible things would happen, that, uh, you know, it would be the end of the world, and end of religion as we know it, and all that. And the reality is this has been pretty much the public response. This was our suspected scenario. It was Raiders of the Lost Ark. We believed that Roswell was probably real, uh, that people had looked at it, said, what the hell, can't figure this out, boxed it up. If you remember the last scene, Raiders of the Lost Ark, the Ark going out and getting put into Suitland or some uh, place like that, and say, well, we'll come back and look at it uh, over time. Uh, one of the questions is, do satellites pick them up? And the answer is yes. This again is early, um, you can see 1984. This is satellites in geosynchronous orbit, meaning very high, it's very cold. It is staring at the Earth. Now, one of the reasons it was classified for a long time was where it was looking at. Again, this is bad old days. But the point is, here's the satellite way, way up, and something very hot flew by the satellite and was going down uh, towards Earth. Looked at it, and again, the bottom line was, have no idea what this is. I went to NORAD. I was having a, a, had a briefing there, and I thought I'd be a smart ass and say, uh, do you have, uh, you know, do you ever get things with very fast acceleration describing some of the things? And the answer was, oh, you mean UFOs? Yes. Uh, did not want to go any further. And the point was uh, that uh, it's, they had thousands of, of reportings on there, which went Ba uh, basically nowhere. Now this is what I call a paradox, is that, you know, most people think uh, Washington's inept, you know, we, uh, you know, except for UFOs, where they're supposed to be omniscient. Uh, Roswell, this is where I get into uh, lots of uh, trouble. One thing I to point out that Roswell was not a big deal until the 1980s, um, and came out, um, uh, you know, here's the thing, um, who we believe did have their hands on, there was material, something did happen at Roswell, I'm not suggesting that that didn't, but who uh, had their hands on it, went in and they both went, that's it, or that's what it looks like. And there was a very pragmatic uh, answer to it. Uh, the presidential paradox is, uh, I know we like to think that the presidents are going to If you look at how close the, the elections uh, have been, we know some of these. Um, do you think that these people who would sell their mother to be elected, if they had the information, wouldn't have used it at the right time? I find that one uh, hard to believe. Uh, yeah, this is one that I use. Yeah. I did a study on, on the internet, and what I had run into, that there were a list of 38 uh, crashes, 122 bodies, and uh, 14 live ETs reported. And my point is that if uh, you, uh, ET is coming here across the galaxy and that bumping into each other, they have a quality control problem. I mean, they haven't even figured out, we have like collision avoidance, you know, your new car when you drive, orange is somebody alongside you, uh, apparently hadn't figured that one out. No, sorry, there's no huge uh, budget. Uh, one of the things I didn't mention with Apollo that was important, at the time of the Apollo mission, uh, NASA had 4% of the budget, the federal budget. Uh, right now, they're at about 0.4%, uh, so it tells you something about uh, relative uh, priorities. Um, sorry, this, uh, the whole thing with Lazar does not work. Um, and uh, I'll tell you the quick story. Edward Teller, I mentioned him earlier, was a personal friend of mine. And the story went that uh, Lazar was reading the paper. Uh, Edward, or Ed as he calls him, uh, his protégés call him Dr. Teller. Uh, but uh, Lazar calls him Ed and said he was leaning against the paper or against the wall reading the paper and blah, blah, blah. Uh, what most people don't know is that 
uh, when Dr. Teller was 18 years old in Austria, he slipped, uh, or in Hungary, he slipped under a railroad car and had his leg trans uh, traumatically amputated and could not lean. Uh, and also I had took the opportunity to ask him and, you know, because the thing was that Teller supposedly made uh, a magic wand and they bypassed all of the intelligence uh, explanations and all of that. Uh, disclosure project. Um, if you believe stuff Greer puts out, you know, he said, we have been flying these things uh, since uh, 19, late 50, uh, 50s and 60s. Um, absolutely impossible. Your opinion on, on Roswell, um, do, you, do you believe that there was some sort of a anomalous crash of, of some sort? Or? Well, I think Roswell absolutely did happen right unfortunately i come down on the side that i think it was ours okay. and i think that's been pretty well explained and no it wasn't a weather balloon or anything and i think the air force studies on this have been absolutely abysmal uh, particularly the reports that came out and said you know case closed and, and that uh, the effort that went into those studies although you get bo literally volumes uh, that were published because of it but it, um, you know, and um, but I do think that, uh, and, and I've talked to some others, and some of these people can't go into, but um, yeah, we, we know what it was. And by the way, the material that they're describing, um, remember that um, uh, Jesse Marcel came out and described this mysterious stuff that he could grind up, and, yeah, you know, yeah. it would dissolve and it wouldn't burn and all that. That's all true. Was probably part of the material for the reasons that they describe, uh, and did exist at the time. Because if you believed any of these things, to make little widgets that fly around are basically inconsequential compared to the real nugget, which would have been an energy source that we fundamentally do not understand to this day. And using it, again, to make these little witches fly around is nothing compared to, you know, doing away with petrochemicals and the changes in the energy systems that would, you know, literally change the uh, geopolitical structure of the world. What's your take on how the Navy and the DOD have reacted to this situation? Uh, my, my take is I'm not at all surprised because basically there's no coordination. And I don't think that uh, it's uh, surprising that one hand doesn't know what the other one's doing. Um, as you know, I had run a similar program like 35 years ago. And one of the things we looked for was where does the information go? Is there any coordination? And bottom line was no. See, that, that runs counter to the whole UFO community thinking, oh, we're orchestrating the release of information that's going to be dribs and drabs. Um, the reality is that it's very personality dependent. You've got to have somebody who's willing to pick up the guide on and, you know, carry it forward and be willing to risk your reputation and career uh, off it. Uh, because some of the things you're, you were discussing there and why don't people come forward? Well, particularly within the military, as within the aviation community, uh, reporting UFOs is not what we call career enhancing. Uh, you can get your wrist slapped for it, not because you're saying anything wrong. It's just a risk of embarrassment. Um, you tried to find um, some type of connection with the government researching UFOs um, several years ago, and you just you came up empty-handed, right? You couldn't really see anything going on. But we had you know, representatives from all of the services, many of the branches of the intelligence community, as well as the uh, aerospace industry. Uh, everybody had top secret and SCI-level clearances, and we were exchanging information. But you know, bottom line was everybody says, well, I thought you were doing it passing the buck to somebody else. Do you think that the Pentagon video shows a black project technology that is being tested against its own military as an unknown craft? Yeah, I keep getting that. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll rephrase that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I say in general, there are some people that I would take to task who have been making uh, wild claims. You can find it on their internet. Oh, that we've had interstellar uh, travel capability. Uh, we're just hiding it for some reason that I don't fully understand. Uh, but I totally reject that uh, that notion. So there are a few people who make those kind of claims, but it's absolutely not true. Uh, and that is, uh, if we have some of the capabilities that they're describing, that we have little widgets that fly around is totally insignificant compared to that means we have a unique understanding of some previously unknown energy system. If you had that, uh, no matter what you're talking about, zero-point energy, and gravity, et cetera, um, that changes the total geopolitical situation of the world. So the notion that you know we're hiding an energy source of that magnitude is just preposterous. Yeah, along the li- along those same lines, I've heard many people say that they think the triangles that everyone is seeing these days, um, you know, that also have the capability of um, acting weightless and moving without um, obvious propulsion and all that. Um, A lot of them, there's a lot of people that are steadfast saying that that's definitely, you know, some type of um, government technology. Those craft have been reported since the 1800s. Right. Oh, you know, exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> before Kitty Hawk. Right. So, right. No. And uh, you know, I had someone on the show that I just I just know through um, you know, my what I do for work that uh actually came on the show just for a few minutes to talk about a triangle that was over um over her car when she was young. Um, you know, that was just hovering over and then took off and never made a sound. You know, this is back in nineteen seventy six. I think she said 77. So, yeah, if that technology was around, I don't think we'd be not using it and hiding it this long, especially. We have now been at war for entering the 17th year. Uh, we have spent uh, upwards, uh, well, certainly over $2 trillion, if not $3 trillion. And during conflict, you do see some advances in technology, but probably the best things we've seen are the F-35, which is certainly not a uh, gravitational or anti-gravity system. Uh, There are some better sensor systems, and we've done a great deal of work in prosthetics, um, which will bleed over into the civilian sector as well. You do not see, you know, any of these big leaps. And I know the conspiracy crowd says, well, they're saving it. You know, at two trillion dollars and seventeen years, you're saving it for what? Right. Um, for someone to try to wrap their head around what a trillion, just one trillion, is, if someone were to count to one trillion, they'd have to live thirty thousand years. Mm-hmm.